In this video, you're going to learn how to create these Apple style parallax cards that also have these amazing, smooth, progressive blur on them. Well, the great thing about this will be that we're going to be building this on a website. So this is not going to be like a fake Figma prototype or like a video or something like a PNG. No, this is a real website. You're going to be able to send it to your friends. You're going to be able to publish it to the real world wide web. So it's gonna be real and did I say that we're not gonna be writing any code for this? So even if you're a complete beginner, you're gonna be able to do this, create this and add it to your portfolio let's say. So without any further ado, let me introduce myself, my name is Nandi, this is Framer University and let's get started. So I'm gonna break this video up into three sections. The first section will be about preparing the assets. So I'm going to show you how you can grab the images that we will need for this type of interaction. Then the second section will be about building the base. So basically we're going to be draw rectangles on a design canvas. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's how easy it is to build websites in framework, I guess. Uh, the third section will be about adding effects. So we're going to add the gradient blur or the progressive blur. And we're going to also add this parallax hover effect to our little card. So yeah, that's the roadmap. And now let's start with the first section, preparing the assets. So before I do anything here, I want to show you Arkady, who actually inspired me to do this because he posted this on Twitter, uh, a little tutorial where he showed how to do this little card here that you can see on the screen in Figma. So yeah. I'm going to leave this post link in the description, so make sure to check it out. But how do we prepare assets like this? So as you can see, we have this little uh, castle here. How do we find a similar image? So basically, I, I'm i not sure how you can find a similar one, but what I did is I just searched up uh, this uh, dome here, or I don't even know what is this. Yeah, it's a dome. Great. So. I basically searched it up and as you can see, it has a pretty great structure. It has a clear background and the foreground. So the foreground is the object, the building and the foreground or the, sorry, the background is pretty clear, pretty clean, just a blue sky. So we need something like this because we have to separate the foreground from the background so we can move them separately. As you can see here, um, these cars have separate backgrounds and foregrounds and that's how we move them separately so you have something like this an image and then you can basically separate the foreground from the backgrounds with something like a remove.bg website you can just drag and drop your image there and um, in just a couple of seconds you have the background removed you can also do it manually in photoshop or something like that but i guess this is the easiest way of doing it so now we have the image, that's basically what we need. So if we jump into Framer, you can also see that I already have this image. By the way, if you remix this project with the link in the description, you're going to find a page here in this file, which is called Starter. If you go there, you're going to see exactly the same thing that I see right now in this tutorial. You're going to also have the image so you can, you know, start building with me because I think that's the way you can learn the most. So now let's go into the second section and let's build the base of this card. So first of all, uh, I'm going to leave this little Osaka card here because we, we're going to be able to take a look at that and just, you know, rebuild everything. So first of all, we have the base of the card. It's like a little square. It's going to be 240, I guess, and 250, but I'm going to double check it here. So Osaka, mm, we have this card here, 240 and 250, exactly. Okay, so the fill color will not be needed and we're gonna call this Sicily. So that's our first frame. I'm gonna turn it into a stack by pressing this layout button here. So now we have this Sicily stack here. I'm gonna create another frame within this because we are drawing these frames in Framer to group specific elements. So for example, in this frame, we're going to have all the background items. So background, I'm going to set the width to 240 and 250 the height. So it's going to be the same exact height uh, and width as the Sicily frame. 
So now within this BG, we can place all the elements that we need in the background. So for example, this sky image, which I'm going to just copy and paste from here. So BG elements and sky, let's copy it and paste it here. So now as you can see, we have this Sicily frame, then within that we have the BG and within that we have the sky. So, so far it looks pretty great. Also, as you can see, the opacity of the sky is a little bit decreased, 2.85. So yeah, I also set the pointer and the uh, pointer events and the user select to none. You can just get those styles from here, clicking the plus button, and adding those. It's important because um, if we add like decorative elements or stuff like that, into our framework sites, we usually set those to pointer events none and user select none. So users will not be able to engage and interact with those elements. So as you can see, I cannot really right click this image and save it, for example, or drag it around. So basically that's why we do that. You can also see that we need some corner radius. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to the BG frame. So BG and the corner radius will be 30. So this looks really nice. Now, what else do we need within the BG? We probably also need this image here. So I'm going to just go ahead, comment an X, so cut it and then paste it in within the BG. So now, as you can see, it is set to absolute positioning, so I can just move it around freely. I'm just positioning it to the center of this frame by pressing option H and option V, and then I can just resize it and um, have it on a little smaller size something like this i think can work really well so now we have this and so i guess we have every single thing that we need in the background only one thing is left which is the text so i'm going to just hit t on my keyboard click within this pg and write sicily so this looks really nice However, as you can see, this Sicily text is within the image. So the image is actually a frame and we can place elements within that, but I don't want the text to be within that frame. So I will just put it here within the BG. So we have Sicily image and sky. And if I start moving this with my cursor, you can see that this text is now over the image. So what we need to do to fix this is basically I'm just going to select the Sicily and then place it below the image. Uh, what you might notice is that even though you set the Sicily to below the image, it still is above it. Well, usually it's because some of these layers have maybe a Z index that you don't notice. So what you can do in that case is you can make sure that add, you add Z index to both elements, so image and the text as well. And you make sure that the Z index on the text is lower compared to the image. So let's say the image has Z index one and the text has Z index zero. So let me see what font we used here. It's big shoulders text. Okay. So let's go to Sicily and select that font on the right panel, big shoulders text. Okay. It's going to be, I guess, bold, or maybe it's going to be black i'm not sure actually i'm also not sure about this size so i will have to go back again to the previous card just double check it so let's see black and 70 okay black and 70 and i also saw that we decreased the letter spacing just a little bit so i'm gonna do that as well so i'm pressing option age again uh, on this text to make sure that it is centered horizontally and so we have this text now and it looks very nice. So all we have to do now is to make sure that we have some more elements within this card, because as you can see, we have some small things like these uh, little highlights on the top or the shadow on the bottom of the card. And we also need this text. So let's create those things. So BG can be collapsed. And also I'm going to press command and L on my keyboard to lock this layer. So if I press F on my keyboard and draw a frame, I'm not drawing this frame into the BG frame, which is really, really useful. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a frame actually, 
And I'm going to set it to absolute positioning because now as you can see it is relative and I cannot really move it anywhere. So I can just reorder it with the BG, but I want it to be really flexible so I can position it anywhere. So absolute positioning and these pins will be zero. So as you can see, it is going to all the edges, top, left, right, and bottom. So we can also rename it to border. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the fail color and also add a border radius to it, which will be the same, so 32. And so what we can do on this is that we can add shadow. So this will be a shadow on the inside. It's not gonna be an outside shadow. Um, and then the Y will be, as you can see, I'm increasing the Y. Uh, it's gonna be around two. The blur will be zero. And as you can see, it is up here on the top and I can change it to a white color, maybe 35% transparency. So now as you can see, we have this nice top uh, highlight on the card. And then we can also add the bottom. So let's add that as well. It's going to be another shadow. It's going to be again on the inside. The Y will be minus two. Blur will be zero. And again, 35% transparency. So now we can see our little shadow on the bottom of this card. So it is pretty nice. Now let's continue with the text. So I'm going to just add another frame here. And I'm going to also lock the border because just to show you, if I draw a frame, it's going to be within the border and I don't really want that. So let's lock the border, draw the frame. It's going to be absolute positioning, pins on the left, right and bottom. And then let's have a little taller frame here. It's going to be called text. And so we need some text and an icon here. So first of all, I'm going to remove the fill color here and then I'm going to show you how I usually work with icons in Framer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little component here from the other card. It's called SVG. I'm going to copy it and paste it here. So we have this component. And as you can see, it has this SVG code uh, property on the right panel. What we can do is we can paste in the SVG code of our icon there. So let's go to Figma and I'm going to search for central icon system plugin. By the way, I think this is the best icon pack out there. So I really do recommend this one. I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to buy this. So um, location and I can just click this now is here on the uh, canvas and I can just go ahead, copy paste this SVG and I can paste it here. And now I can basically customize the color here, change the color, but it's gonna be white. So I'm just actually showing what you can do here. And the reason why I'm doing this with the SVG component is because I could also just come in the V here within the main frame on our website. But as you can see, this is a graphic layer in Framer that is not really easy to edit. Um, you have all these little layers here, these paths, and it's also not really easy to work with variants and components. So again, I really do recommend getting this SVG component that you can see here on my canvas. I actually don't have a page for this on the Frame University website, but if you remix this project, you're gonna be able to get it by going to assets panel and then grabbing it from here. So we have this little uh, icon here. So let's get the text here as well. So um, you already know how to create text layers. So you just hit T on your keyboard, click into the canvas and you uh, basically type in the text, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just quickly get these texts just to speed up this process. So I'm going to re name this to the name of this building. So let's just paste that in. And so now we have the name and the icon. We can select both of them and then hit option command and enter on our keyboard. Now it is wrapped in a stack. We can call this stack uh, top, not TO, but top. And then we can set the uh, width to fill, but we cannot set it just yet because the text, which is the parent container of this top, 
isn't set to a layout. So let's activate that layout. So now we can set the width to fill, which is pretty nice. Let's adjust the gap here to six, pretty nice. And now we can just copy this text, paste it in here and say Palermo, Sicily, Italy. We're going to also decrease the opacity here just a bit, so maybe 65. And you can see that we cannot really see the texts here because we don't yet have the progressive blur, but we're going to add it really soon and we're going to see much more. <laughs> so let's decrease the gap here just a bit. Uh, so these texts are a little bit closer to each other. Let's have four gap. As you can see, we also have this little line here above Osaka Castle. So the way we're going to create this is by drawing a frame here. It's going to be one pixel high. Make it a little bit more white. And then the fill color will be a linear gradient. I'm going to try to rotate it, but I have to zoom in a little bit. So let's rotate it like this. And... Uh, the right one will be white 0%, the middle one will be white and 100%, so white and 100%, and then this one will also be white and 0%. So now as you can see, we have this line here, and we can just decrease the opacity so it's not that uh, intense, so maybe 40 uh, is going to work here. Okay, so this looks really nice. So now we can move into the next section of this video, which is adding those effects. So progressive blur, the hover effects and everything. So let's move on to those. So first of all, I'm going to show you my Frame University website, because I have this little blur gradient component here that you can easily find by just going to the description. I'm going to have it there. And if you scroll down this page, you can click copy component. Once you have that, you can go back to Framer and go within your Sicily card and just hit Command and V. Now it is pasted in. As you can see, it's again relative, so we have to make sure that it's absolutely positioned and then we can now move it around freely. And as you can see, it looks really, really nice. So let's position it to the bottom zero pin and then maybe it's gonna be 200 pixel height and then we can also increase or decrease the blur here i'm not sure what i had on this other one so it is 24 let's get 24 here as well as you can see we have this little overflowing part it's because this blur gradient actually has to have a radius so we can just set the 32 pixel radius that we had on the card as well what is really important here though, is that the Sicily card here, the parent of the blur gradient, cannot have border radius. Because if the Sicily has border radius, you can see that the blur gradient breaks, unfortunately. So make sure that the parent frame of your blur gradient does not have a radius. We can now move into the second effect that we're gonna add here, which is called the parallax hover effect. So that's gonna be also pretty simple. We're gonna go to Framer University and then we're gonna go to parallax blur gradient cards in Framer. So the resource page of this very remix. And then if we scroll down, we can see this code override. So we're gonna copy this code, go back to Framer, go to assets, click this plus button, new code override, and then testing, I'm just gonna name it testing, but you can give it any name. And here you're gonna find this automatically generated code. You can just delete this and then paste in the code that you got from my site. Now we have the code override. Then what we can do is we can apply these overrides to different layers. So what does parallax mean? Parallax basically means that these different layers that we created, so for example, the foreground, this little dome here, this is the foreground. The middle ground or the middle element is the text, so Sicily. And then the background is the sky. So these are moving at the same time, but with different speed, different intensity. And that's how you get the parallax effect. So now what we need is we need, have to add these overrides to the different layers. And that's it. 
So let's go into the background frame and first let's select the sky. So that's the background. So it's going to have the lowest intensity. So I'm going to apply with intensity one. That means that that's going to move the slowest. Then the Sicily will have code override testing and with intensity five. So that's going to be the mid one, the text, and then the image, the dome here, it's going to have code overrides, then with intensity 10. So now if we preview this, now you can see that it works perfectly. However, I'm going to show you a little thing. I'm going to move this image somewhere around here just to show you this little issue that you might run into. So as you can see, as these cards and uh, different layers are following my cursor, this image is it's, it's moving too far because now we can see that it is it ends there and it has a, a sharp edge and it doesn't really look great on the right side. So the way we can prevent that from happening is by adding uh, limits to the override. So if you edit the code here, you can see that the width intensity 10, so the stronger, strongest intensity and all intensities, by the way, have these numbers here. So the first number is the intensity. You can change that as well. And the second number is the X maximum offset. And then the third one is the Y maximum offset. So basically I cannot move the element with the width intensity 10 for more than 400 units. So if I set it to, let's say 100, then as you can see, it's going to move so much less on the X axis. And you can see that I cannot really see it now on the right, but it is still there. Maybe if I add, you know, a smaller value here, maybe 50, you're going to see that it fixes this problem. As you can see, the image doesn't really move whatsoever. Uh, but you know, I just changed the position to show you this because it used to be 400 here and then the image used to be somewhere around here. And so with that 400 X limit, it works perfectly. If I wouldn't have that limit there, so let's get it back to 2000, which is really, really, really large. So it doesn't really uh, activate. So as you can see, 2000, it is just too big and it just follows the cursor and we can see that the image just ends there. So let's set the 400 limit back here. So as you can see, it's pretty cool because you can customize this code override really easily. So now basically we have this parallax card that also has these progressive blur and these elements are following the cursor and it looks really nice. And you can add it to your portfolio or to your websites. And yeah, your friends will be pretty impressed, I guess. So now all we have to do is to go to the top right corner of this Framer Editor, go and publish our website. And if we open this, you're going to see that it is here on the real World Wide Web. We can interact with this and yeah, it looks pretty good. So that's it for this video. Make sure to go ahead and check out Framer.University because I have a bunch of free resources, remixes, and tutorials just like this, all for free. Did I say that? So yeah, um, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more. And I'm going to see you in the next one.